traffic accidents have been a major cause of death in Zimbabwe. Individuals have either been killed or paralyzed, a situation which has in turn affected our economy as these individuals will no longer be as productive after going through this ordeal. Uh, according to the statistics that were released, according to the sixth general Awards with the Traffic Safety Council and the Ministry of Transport, in 2017, 1,828 people died because of road traffic accidents because someone failed to intervene or someone failed to assist the people of the victims. And in 2018, 1,986 people died according to, to road traffic accidents, which was an, quite an increase in road traffic accidents. And 42,950 road traffic accidents were recorded in 2017, and there was a slight increase to 52,052 in 2018. So we're saying that uh, it's a national disaster that we're facing in Zimbabwe is we're losing most lives to second to road traffic accidents. Well, there are quite a number of factors which are contributing to an increase in uh, road traffic accidents. One of which is um, an increase in the number of vehicles on our roads. And yet, those roads were not tailor-made for the traffic flow which we now experience in our roads. So as a result of that, we end up having congestion in our roads and ultimately accidents will occur. And then the other reason is that of um, having uh, the commuter omnibus operators who are not employing uh, responsible and well-qualified drivers and uh, as such they are shortchanging um, their customers and ultimately we end up having road traffic accidents. Chandona Joko Sam accident in Momo, the Razedu one, the Mapoto, two Masen Post, the Kuraka, the Panama KV, a Pasina Samango, Vagana, and a Pipo, the Tasangazin, the Ragan, the Jitungis, Ongo Pin, and a Pasen Post, Papono Sangan, and the Zimushi, the new traffic is serial. Plus, Futu and Watcho are not driving, or Motor Watcho and Gachungo Katakan and Pang Pasno Katwa and Watcho are two Zig, who's not driving, was they? In Lake Agatasima, we deal with Tawaka to Takasaka contracting units as we were supposed to summon the day. The Nikulo, the Motka, and Yakanya Yabuzarisa, Agatasima, we she Motka, Ningay, Ningay City, it's not got the Rogun Zidi, Elode. As you have told Nayako Lord, Mashok Sacho, Tazabudi, who support a Motka, you took the accident. Business and donations. Jodzi Road, the Munum Zimbabwe, the Nigger, the Lombard Tibatque. Maku Bama Putu Aranyan Kuba Wayasi, she may she come. She would be one. Roger is the old Motkar. He know the service. In a Makiza, I know Fanina Kufamba. You end up service. Special alignment. Do she may she in which you would tumble the Bana was consuming some moti. Accidents are caused by uh, a number of uh, factors in driving, especially when people drive their cars without checking their cars. First, before you drive your car, before you get into your car, you have to know that all your tires are okay. Um, you know, they are not like worn out tires. They have enough pressure. And you also have to note that your car is in good condition. Uh, otherwise, you know, if uh, you, 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 your car might have uh, um, braking uh, problems and whenever you're driving, you know, you might just like ram into a car. So it's always very necessary to, for you also to check on your car before you drive your car. Just check your car. Keep regular um, checks on your car. What causes road accidents, as it's been alluded to, is 85% uh, human error and um, there is also maybe 25% defective uh, vehicle uh, driving. But um, you would also want to know that the state of the road um, is also a major uh, cause to uh, road accidents, a way that our roads have passed their shelf life and have passed their uh, 
uh, the, their lifespan, which is about 25 years. So they need reconstruction and uh, they also need rehabilitation and they also need to, uh, to, 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 to be given a facelift in particular carriageway markings and also portal, uh, portal uh, patching uh, using what is called maintenance uh, monies that come in periodic and routine uh, maintenance funds coming in from the Ministry of uh, uh, Transport. Road traffic accidents have been noted to be mainly caused by human error, car mechanical faults due to lack of service, narrow pothole roads, congestion, driving under the influence of alcohol, amongst other reasons. We encourage that those uh, vehicles that have got uh, mechanical faults or electrical faults that you have them checked, because also mechanical fault and human error they attribute to road accidents. So in terms of safety, you should be also worried about your, your wipers, your indicators, your mirrors, then also locking your dogs every time, especially those who will be driving with children. Because the children in most circumstances are the ones that are prone to suffer a lot in road traffic accidents because they won't be secured in the vehicles. And uh, also switches controls and devices. Make sure that your children they don't play with switches controls and devices of your vehicle. Then you make sure you do uh, driving checks before and after driving. So in terms of driving checks, we encourage that you rest every time that you drive for about two hours or at least 100 kilometers. You should rest, take a rest on labors. Uh, because the new current guidelines and the new current SADAC systems, we encourage that each and every driver goes on labors once they travel at least 100 kilometers or 200 k's. Then you take a rest. Then in terms of food, we also encourage that you don't have to eat whilst driving. For, so for those that have conditions and those that take medications, we encourage you to take your medications before driving so that uh, your drugs and your medications they don't affect you or you might have uh, to have someone who has to drive you as well. Then uh, in terms of resting, we also encourage that before taking long trips, especially during night driving, we don't encourage night driving because the human body is designed to sleep during the night time and rest uh, and work during daytime. So encourage that we avoid as much as possible night driving because in most circumstances, uh, night driving, that's where most accidents happen. So encourage, if you have to drive at night, we encourage that you sleep at least six to eight hours before driving so that you'll be able to endure the road and make sure that your vehicle is road with and make sure that your vehicle lights and uh, everything is working in good order. Then in, also in terms of night driving, also discourage speeding and we encourage that each and every driver they obey the speed limits and uh, road regulations and rules so that we minimize road traffic accidents. So also you taking into consideration that the fact that uh, we might be we are having our uh, queues of fuels, we also encourage that people don't travel with uh, fuel tanks or jerry cans because you might also end up, if you're involved in an accident, it might or cause a lot of pains and uh, a lot of fire. So I encourage most people that if you can try and do um, as much as possible to avoid traveling with jerry cans because the fumes, they might affect other people health-wise and also in terms of uh, in terms of accident, they also affect you a lot. Local authorities have been blamed for not maintaining roads properly, a situation which has forced drivers to avoid using the right track on the road, thus increasing the risk of head-on collisions. Now, local authorities have got a very big role to play, especially when it comes to road maintenance, because the poor roads that we have nowadays are also a major cause for road accidents. And therefore, we encourage the local authorities to make sure that uh, roads are well maintained, because remember, what may cause you know, an accident could be potholes and uh, someone will be trying to avoid a portal or anything obstructing the smooth flow of uh, uh, vehicles. And as such, local authorities must, one, make sure that roads are well maintained, 
Secondly, they must issue out tickets on um, careless drivers on the roads and they must make sure that there is a proper mechanism of checking the nature of uh, vehicles that are on the road within their locality and uh, this I hope will minimize road accidents. We encourage each and every driver to make sure that all their vehicles are roadworthy by making sure that uh, they go to a certified and professional mechanic or the vehicle safety department so that their vehicle checks are checked and we encourage those that are going to be traveling to their rural areas or anyway around the country that you have your vehicles checked frequently or before the journey, especially those that have been parked for quite a long time. To make sure that they are roadworthy in terms of their vehicles, engine and performance as well as safety. Then encourage also that those that will be enjoying their parties over the weekend, over the festive season, that uh, they don't drink and drive. Most cars are not very roadworthy. No, I think my tie, my brake, uh, my lights are Nushanda, my pipe are Nushanda. And I've seen a chance to look at some accidents. Certainly one needs to um, make sure that uh, they need to make sure that their, their vehicle is uh, roadworthy and they need to check their, um, their tires. It is only good to make sure also that when you get your ex jab vehicle coming in to Zimbabwe, uh, because a lot of these ex jab vehicles spend months in the sea or on the sea, uh, on ferries or otherwise uh, coming into uh, ports of entry, there is what is called crystallization uh, due to, uh, to, uh, to solidifying, so solidification of those uh, tires because of salt that would have uh, gone onto those tires. So those tires, irrespective of how new they might look, they need to be changed. Your car should be road wet, it should be wet well, that's the first uh, important thing. Then secondly, sometimes, don't drink and drive. Most of the times people they drink and uh, you know then they just think no if I get behind the car the car knows the direction home. That's not really the point you know because uh, if you are drunk you can get into an accident. Also avoid the use of cell phones whenever you're driving. Don't start uh, chatting on the cell phone or answer your cell phone because that also causes a lot of accidents. You can just drive alongside the road and then you know just park your car. If you want to talk to someone, if you think maybe the phone call is urgent, just park on the side of the road and then you can talk to that person. So as you know, I'm going to talk to you about Mufana kuti mukwagwa maputo ese ova ova varwa pese pani pani kana parwenda mutsikisirwa pogara pakazikana kuti pongeswa sign post so that munhu ari kudrive mota anoenda aka prepare kufamba kuzoti kuti apa ndikuenda pamberi apa pane chi pane mutsikisirwa pani ndikuenda apo pachikoro pane chikoro ma kilometers anga aka kunyora ndokuti accidents asadi asadi kuti ma accidents acho vana vanga vachidhungwa pachikoro Mileage, I want to Ura, Tabuti, Waisa, Taira, Pamuta, Makirometer, and Taurwa, Arino Famba. suspension, in Makirometer, Arino Famba Motka, Kutinga Chenda, Kuno, Service Qua, Gaza Service, 
shule mbunge wa famba makilomita anta uwa na wana wanoka bila mota so you would want to know that um, in uh, the Sadak region or in the global community, Zimbabwe is the only country that has got um, uh, licenses or certificates of competencies that do not expire or that people have uh, received and have um, not been able to go back and uh, renew. Uh, what that does is uh, it keeps, it puts people's lives at risk in that uh, during the tenure of uh, that uh, certificate of competence, you find that people um, get uh, to have diseases such as uh, sugar diabetes and um, maybe are disabled in the process of um, um, in, in line of duty of their duties and they um, maybe get uh, disabled and they now need specialized vehicles in order to embark on their journeys but all this can only be interrogated if our certificate of competence gets to expire so for those uh, who will be traveling, uh, especially out of the country, and those that are known to have uh, medical conditions, we also encourage you that you have your, your health checkups before traveling, especially those who are hypertensive patients that take uh, blood pressure medications. We encourage you that you take your blood pressure medications with you, so that if it happens that you are involved in an accident or you happen to your condition to worsen, we might be able to help you, or someone might be able to help you. And those that are epileptic, we also encourage that you have a medic bracelet so that if you happen to go into an epileptic fit, especially if you're the one that is going to be driving, we encourage you not to skip your medications and to take your medications because then if you happen to go into an epileptic fit, you might cause uh, severe damage to other people and even yourself. And uh, also those that are diabetic, we also encourage you to take your medications or to exercise or to follow the regulations and the rules that you're given by your physicians or doctors so that we reduce road traffic accident and also any other condition that you might think of. If you encounter or if you're at home or you're at work or you happen to witness a road traffic accident, there's what is known as a primary assessment of what you're supposed to do and assess the scene and the environment before you assist your patient because we don't want to be losing lives where we have already lost lives, especially in road traffic accidents. So in most circumstances, uh, on your primary assessment, you assess the scene and your environment and you have to take standard precautions before assisting the patients, which might be wearing whatever is available to you, because we agree that first aid is using whatever is available to you to assist people who are critical injured using the applied and accepted principles of saving lives. So our main principles is uh, we want to save a life. So after saving a life, we want to promote the, uh, prevent the condition from worsening and uh, we also want to promote recovery. So in terms of assessing your sin, the main priority is taking standard precautions, which is wearing your plastic or gloves if you have, and we also encourage each and every traffic user to have a basic first aid kit in their vehicle so that if you assist in an accident, it will make a great impact to Zimbabwe. Then also the second area, the second thing is uh, after making sure that your environment is safe, you have uh, to take consider seeing others which might be electrical, physical or biochemical. As you have witnessed in most road traffic accidents, uh, the buses that will be having accidents or private vehicles that are having accidents, most people are failing to verify and to make sure the things that you said by putting uh, and applying road cones and warning other road traffic users of a possible accident that might be encounter as a secondary accident after the first initial accident. And the next thing also, if you are to assist, or uh, before you jump out of your vehicle, if you want to assist, you have to form what is known as an initial trajectory whereby you are uh, assessing the number of victims that are available at the scene, so that when you are calling for help or additional resources, you call the relevant authorities and they come in their numbers to assist people so that we save lives in Zimbabwe. And the last thing also is uh, you have to consider the mechanism of the initial of illness of your victims, because the severity of uh, road traffic accidents or the, how you see your vehicles after an accident might tell you of the possible impacts because some people who are involved in accidents, some have minutes to survive, some have got hours. So you have to call the relevant authorities within the stipulated times because the human brain can survive for quite a short time if uh, it's not getting oxygen. So encourage each other to also to have images numbers in your vehicles or 
road traffic safety stickers on your vehicle so that in case of accidents, you also be able to assist people. It is also important for drivers to be equipped with first aid knowledge. This will help in the event that they are involved in an accident or happen to witness an accident. They'll be able to assist their accident victims. During the times that I went to school, we used to have Traffic Safety Council of uh, Zimbabwe coming to, uh, to our schools and making sure that they educate children and the teachers on the way that they need to conduct themselves um, uh, on the road and in order also to save life and to save their lives themselves. So you will need to know that um, there are a lot of initiatives that can be embarked on by the Traffic Safety Council of uh, Zimbabwe in order to educate the public on how first to protect themselves um, when they have been injured and to resuscitate themselves or the other road users and other uh, citizens in the environs of the accidents uh, or of our road environment in terms of uh, uh, both resuscitating and both uh, taking care of those that would have been uh, involved in an accident. Whenever an accident occurs, if you pass through where an accident has occurred, try to see which, which medical, uh, uh, sorry, which first aid you can apply there and then. Um, it's also advisable for most of the motorists to keep some essential um, medical aid uh, kit stuff in your car. For example, you can have bandages, um, you can have, you, you know, you can have a lot of stuff, water to help if ever there's an accident. So keeping a first aid kit in your car, it's very, very essential for all motorists. So whenever you get to an accident, first check what, how you can help that person that has been injured. After checking that person that has been injured, try to call the next police station or call an ambulance so that those people can be helped. If you happen to to see an accident along the roads, a driver should not just pass by, but should give first aid. But how is this going to be done and to be very possible? I think there must be a policy that every driver must be trained in first aid so that um, there is life resuscitation uh, along roads by vehicle owners themselves. Most people die from road traffic accidents because of the unavailability of a first aid equipped individual. 70% of our people die before reaching definitive uh, places of health care institutions uh, because they have not been attended to within the first hour after the accident. So what needs to be done is to take care of um, our patients or people that would have been involved in road carnage within the very first hour after the accident. These are called accident victims stabilization centers so that we stabilize our patient and we reduce the chances of uh, those that are injured uh, due to road carnage to die before they reach the, the, the places of definitive health care. After making sure that uh, you're seeing yourself and you want to approach the victims, you now approach the victim and then you check out their level of consciousness. So generally, after a road traffic accident, especially if it's a mass crash accident by both buses or combines or private vehicles, generally you can just ask, uh, ask for anyone who wants to help. And uh, in general terms, what should be worried about is life threatening conditions which uh, might lead to death, if not to death, within several minutes. Because most people that are involved really in road traffic accidents, some have got seconds to survive, some have got minutes, some have got hours. So we encourage each and every Zimbabwe not to hesitate to assist in uh, people who are involved in road traffic accidents. And we also encourage each and every Zimbabwe to be trained in basic first aid tips, because most lives that have been lost could have possibly been saved. So after assessing that your patient is alive, you then go on to check your circulation by checking the pulse if they are not responsive. If they are responsive, your main objective is to be controlling bleeding, which will be shown you in a practical later on. But your main objective, if they were the pulse and you feel that the patient is alive, is to control bleeding, especially after the traffic accidents. And if they've got uh, no bleeding, then you also move on to checking if they are breathing properly. 
if they're not breathing properly, you have to assist them. But the way you're going to assist them also plays a critical role. And, uh, and also want to minimize movement of these victims. Because most of them, they will be suffering from spinal injuries. So we want to prevent worsening their conditions by giving them a paralysis or even worsening in any other way. Then after checking that they are breathing properly, you also then go on to assist with uh, checking a general assessment of the patient, like a random body scan, or checking or if they are alive and talking to you. You can then check uh, the chief complaints and when you go for an ambulance or when you go for a ruling medical laboratory, you'll be able to assist them and know how to render first aid to them as well.